Hello everyone, the RC Crawler King here, and today I'm going to do a little how-to video on how to bind the Spectrum 4649T telemetry receiver to your Spectrum transmitter, as well as setting it up with the Fusion Gen 2 flight controller that comes in the Vortex 250 Pro, and also with the KISS FC. The original question I had when I wanted to do this was where does it plug in and how do I set it up? On the Vortex 250 Pro flight controller, I found that this connector here, someone had pointed out that this has four pins. The answer I found is this connector. What this does is it takes that red wire that was right beside the black wire before and moves it over and that pin on this board supplies your 5 volt power. This is how we're going to be able to hook up the 4649T receiver with the Vortex 250 Pro. As for the KISS FC, we're going to need to come up with a different solution. As you can see here, the connector for the Spectrum satellite port on the KISS FC only has three pins so that it works with any 3.3 volt Spectrum serial race receiver. However, on the 4649T, we need five volts. The first thing we need to do is set up our transmitter with our receiver. This process is called binding. Start off by making sure all your trims are centered. After you've done that, go to your setup menu by pressing on the scroll wheel and scrolling all the way down to system setup. Go to model select and add new model if you don't already have one. I already previously had my Vortex 250 Pro bound to a 3.3 volt receiver, so everything will already be set up to where it needs to be. So I'm going to go ahead and select my old preset. Find an RC car that's all set up that already has a receiver in it. This is going to be the easiest way to bind this up because I found a lot of people have problems binding it after they cut off this Y harness. So what you need to do is make sure this Y harness is plugged into your 4649T receiver. This one here is going to plug into the receiver on your RC car and this one here you're going to put a bind plug in. Once you've done that go ahead and plug the receiver into the other receiver which will supply power for this process. Once you have it plugged in, grab a battery for your RC car and plug it in to your RC car's ESC. Once you do this, you'll have an orange light flashing on the 4649T receiver. At this point, we go back to our transmitter and we're going to scroll down to system setup again. Then we're going to keep scrolling until we find bind. Once you put some distance in between the receiver and the transmitter, just simply holding it away, click the bind button. and you should get that message on your remote. Now, the receiver and transmitter are bound together and we won't have any problems while we're setting this up. Now, the next simple thing we need to do is solder together the connectors. Now that we've bound, we no longer need the Y harness. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut right here. Now that we've cut the other end of the connector off that goes on the Y connector, we can go ahead and toss that away. Now we're dealing with the connector for the flight controller. Now before we cut this one, the length of wire we're going to need, I'm going to find by plugging in the connector that I just cut. Then we simply just need to plug in the connector on the flight controller for where it's going to be. Simply take our wires from the receiver, bend them around to an area where they're going to be sitting, and then the connector for the flight controller, we're just gonna bend down, and as you can see, they meet up about halfway in between the connectors. So what we'll do, we'll go ahead and cut this a little bit more than half. And now we know we have the perfect length on both connectors for installation later on. The other wire that we have to cut to length is the voltage telemetry wire. They just go to the power connector on your PDB and they tell your battery voltage straight to your transmitter. I'm going to cut it right at the end of the power distribution board and cutting the wire. Next thing we need to do is use our wire strippers to strip back the insulation on the wires so that we can solder them. And then just go ahead and do that for all the other wires that we've cut. The next step in any good soldering job is going to be dipping the ends of the wires in some flux. And just do that for all the wires that we have cut insulation off of. The next step is cutting a decent amount of heat shrink tube for each wire that is going to be joined together. The diameter of this heat shrink tubing I'm using here is 2 millimeter diameter. Make sure you have your heat shrink tubing on before you begin soldering together the wires. Hopefully guys you can see this okay. So I have my soldering iron here. I have my extra hands helping hold the two wires together. And right here in the center are the two wires that I want to join together. They both have flux on them, so this should make the process much easier. I'm going to go ahead and clean my soldering tip. Always make sure your soldering tip's clean before you start. Apply a small amount of solder to the tip of the soldering iron, and then put the soldering iron underneath the wires that you're jointing together, and apply the solder to the top. 
and it should flow through to the bottom where the heat is. And then allow it to dry and check the connection. Now we just need to do that for all the rest of the wires and then we're good to go. Now I have all three of those wires soldered together. We're going to clean them with isopropylene alcohol before we shrink the tube on top because we use flux and flux can be quite corrosive. Just clean off the wires like so. And then just dry them off with some paper towel. So because I like a clean build, I'm going to be going ahead and putting a piece of shrink tube over all three wires. All I have done is taken the small white connector off the end of the pins by carefully prying up each little white tab without prying too far. I left space at each end of the shrink tube. Now that all our wiring is finished, besides the battery output data wire to monitor your quadcopter's battery voltage, we just need to figure out how to set up the receiver to sit on top of the flight controller. So the best way I find for it to sit is like this. Put the Spectrum logo face down on top of the flight controller. This wire here that we made likes to naturally sit like this. Here is the flight controller and receiver mounted on the Vortex 250 Pro PDB. Last thing that we were doing is hooking up the black and red battery telemetry wires for the 4649T to be able to tell your remote what the quadcopter's battery voltage is at. So I've already done that as you can see here. The wires run right underneath of the VTX. The last thing we need to do is enable the new telemetry function on our transmitter. Go into the main menu, scroll down to telemetry, enter this menu here, change it from empty to volts, go down to lipo and select the battery that you're using, adjust the minimum voltage to whatever you like, in this case I'm going to start with 13 volts, change the function from inhibited to enabled either with a voice or a tone, and then status reports, what this is going to do is it's going to tell me the status of my battery every 60 seconds regardless of the battery voltage. Warning reports, what this is going to do is tell you your battery voltage only when it's below volt minimum. Then to enable RSSI, go to flight log, scroll to signal, set this value to whatever you'd like. I'm going to start with 50%. And then to enable it, change it from inhibited to either tone or voice. And then I want my transmitter to tell me every five seconds once signal strength is below 50%. You can change this value to whatever you'd like. Here's a quick test of what the telemetry data will tell you. Flight pack. The great thing about the Vortex is that I basically didn't have to do any real software setup after I had the receiver installed. I just ran the TX wizard and once the TX wizard was done everything was already calibrated and set and I didn't have to do anything else. The only thing you might want to do if you have an arm switch is to connect to Betaflight and go to the modes tab and then just make sure that your switches are set up properly so everything's working there properly. That's pretty much all you have to do for the Vortex. Like it's super straightforward, run the TX wizard, set up your switches in beta flight and you're done there. Okay, in order to get the Spectrum 4649T receiver to work with the KISS flight controller with KISS firmware, you're going to need a fancy little connector like this. The connector will plug in here into the Spectrum SAT port and the white cable is going to connect to the blue wire. So the two wires that you need to hook up for the voltage telemetry data are these two here. On the Mr. Steely PDB, I was able to find battery voltage at those two pins there. Once you've wired up your Spectrum 4649T, as I've shown, setting it up in the KISS software is actually quite simple. Go to the receiver tab, select Spectrum Satellite DSMX, hit save, go to the data output, and set your endpoints so that they read 1000 and 2000 respectively. Once you've set all your endpoints up, you're good to go fly. I hope this video was helpful and helped get you up in the air flying and having fun. Until next time guys, bye for now.